Hey everyone, this is Brett with Wolves Across the Pond, and it's a little late, but I really wanted to talk about Wolves versus Brighton, our most recent match, which was a bit of a failure, but I do think it brought us a lot to discuss about this squad and this club, so let's get into it. All right, so like my other videos, this one's going to be a little off the cuff. I've been kind of ruminating and letting this marinate in my mind over the last couple days, and um, there's a lot of different things I've been thinking about, so I'll just jump right into it. So first of all, obviously not a great result. You never want to see 4-1. I mean, at least it wasn't 4-0, but you still never want to see 4-1. That's just a, a shame. Um, but I will say, I did think that it was very interesting how most of the game Wolves did hang in there. You know, I don't, I don't think that we were just utterly obliterated. I mean, obviously we were for those 10 minutes where they got three goals, but you know, for the most part, we did okay. We hung in there. I think as other people have said, Brighton just did look like the more complete squad. You know, they looked... Like they really had their game plan down. They looked like they had a lot more structure than we did. And we were kind of playing to keep up. But at the same time, I mean, Wolves were looking dangerous in a few different places. And we, I mean, right out the gate, you just saw Silva and Cunha just go for it. It, it was basically very good for me to see that. You know, I in my other videos I've talked about, I want to see the Wolves play with heart. I want to see our our team just really go after the ball and... You know, I, I know their plan at this point has been a little riskier, as we've seen. You know, they've they've basically let a few more goals slide past them, um, kind of high risk, high reward. But I would honestly, I would rather watch them play kind of high risk football than just hang back and dig in and just defend. You know, I. I, I think that we have a squad that's powerful enough to take the ball, take the ball forward and press high like we have been. And I'm so happy to be seeing that. And at this point, I just don't think, um, I just don't think we're quite ready with those finishes as, as we've seen. You know? But it, to me, it almost seems like they just aren't quite sure what to do once they get in the box ready to score. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, what do I do? <laughs> it basically just feels like the midfield is good enough and they're providing enough chances that the attack doesn't quite know how to respond or they're just not used to responding in that volume. So they get up there with an open goal and kind of panic. So I just think, you know, with, with a midfield that's as strong as the midfield we have now, the attack just needs to be ready. You know, they need to be just doing shooting drills like crazy because they, they have a lot of chances and the team as a whole is creating a lot of chances. We're just not capitalizing on those chances. So um, I really hope that uh, Gary O'Neill can set up a plan where our, our attack is just a lot more prepared when those chances do arrive. Um, it, it, it's kind of funny. It made me think of that line from Sherlock Holmes to Game of Shadows where he's like, how many windows must I provide? <laughs> you know, that that's really how this has been the last two games. And so that actually brings another point is uh, um, Nunez's frustration. You know, you we saw that boil over this game. He got really, really frustrated, pushed over a couple players. I think that a lot of that probably stemmed from him being frustrated with the attack. It's like, okay, guys, how much more do I need to do for us to get a goal? <laughs> you know, so I, I think I can see the midfield getting a little frustrated that we haven't been able to capitalize on the chances that they're creating um, but I do think that that's just around the corner I, I do think that very soon we will be able to kind of marry that attack to that really strong midfield presence and that we'll be able to really be like a high scoring team you know there there's no reason that we shouldn't be a high scoring team at this point which is so great to say because we haven't been that for the last couple of years we we've been a defending team just not giving up a lot of goals, but not scoring. That's been our terrible reputation as Wolves have trouble with goals. They never score, which is a shame because, you know, we're Wolves. We should have teeth. We should be attackers, aggressors, and we should be scoring a lot. And um, we just haven't been. But I think that 
once they get this plan under control, I think that we will be able to be a high scoring team. And I think we have the potential to do that. I do think maybe they could use a little more backup if they were able to bring in someone um, during the transfer window before it closes. But even if they can't, I think we have the potential to still be effective. And like I said, Brighton was really strong this time around. And so it, it's it's kind of hard to argue with that result because they just seem prepared for us. And honestly, I think that I think that the squad was maybe a little nervous given the result last time, you know. Uh, maybe they were just a little more timid off the ball. They didn't quite have to see. They didn't quite seem to have that same fire that they had with the Man U game. But it, uh, you know, it, it seemed like they were ready to go. You know, once the whistle blew, they were they were ready to go go after. It, and I was really happy to see that. But um, it just they still they still need to develop. They still need to prepare. I was surprised how much the defense struggled, especially during that. 10 minute window to get to get back on goal they were just being outran by by everyone just seemed like they weren't they weren't ready to get back and defend when the time came so I'm, I'm hoping that Gary O'Neill can also kind of put something into place where there's a little more structure there they, they can get get back and defend more quickly when the time comes but you know overall I, I think it was not a great performance you know that we just had that kind of middle section where we let those goals slip and that's 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 never encouraging but i think that that is going to be much more of an outlier situation than a commonality this season i think that for the most part wolves will be able to hold their own and once we get that scoring under control we're going to be a really tough team to play so um those are my thoughts um I'm very interested to see what happens, you know, with these next few games coming up. Um, I'm very excited to see what developments happen as Gary O'Neill continues to develop the squad and continues to um, kind of develop his own game plan and hopefully fill in some of the gaps that we saw in the Brighton game. Um, but either way, you know, love the squad. I love these players. You know, I, I'm really happy that Huang Hee Chan got to come on and and do his thing and get us a goal that whenever I see him succeed, it, it just warms my heart. I, I love him as a player and I think that he has so much potential and that he, he could be a, you know, a really strong player for us going forward. So, um, but anyway, hope you guys have an excellent day. Thank you so much for tuning in and, uh, yeah, we'll just keep our eyes forward and look ahead and here's to many more games that will go much better than this one did. So we'll see you next time.